Hello everyone, my name is Christian Eschbach, and welcome to another one of my album reviews. Alright, let's get into this album now, okay. Here we go. Black Sabbath. Sabotage. This was album number six in the list of Black Sabbath releases. This would have come, I believe, right after um, Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath. Black Sabbath at this point was experimenting with a multitude of different things. Um, they were definitely well into ample amounts of the magical white powder. And you can definitely hear it at points in this album. I mean, at this point, you can kind of hear it at points in almost every Sabbath album, uh, starting at, like, kind of volume four moving forward. But, uh, even though I talked about volume four, um, and that was my last review, didn't, you know, I, I downplayed it quite a bit. You had Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath, which I've reviewed as well already, and that one is a fantastic album as well. But to me, both of those albums, like, uh, Volume 4 was kind of, Sabbath was just kind of, I almost want to say, while they were trying to progress a little bit, they were kind of stagnated within that previous part of their lives a little. And Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath had them moving more into a progressive nature, which was great. The problem is, is as a diehard Sabbath fan, that moving into a bit of a progressive nature kind of throws them off a little bit with the introduction of synth sounds and stuff like that. Um, now, I've read interviews where Iomi says a lot of what people thought were synths or, or the organ or anything like that was the guitar being played through a rotophaser. I, d I don't know for sure. I, I would love to try one out and see. I've never had the luxury. It's such a cool sound, though, if that's how it actually worked. This album, though, I think kind of blended the last two albums into a more cohesive unit. Um, this album doesn't have as many major big name tracks to it as previous albums did. But the songs that are on this album are a lot more than just album cuts. Uh, there's a few album cuts, but those are kind of buried in this one. And, and let me explain, because this album opens up with Hole in the Sky. This is probably the one of, if not the greatest album opener of all time. And the reason why I said that is um, I recently covered uh, Jimi Hendrix, uh, a couple greatest hits albums there. And specifically the song Voodoo Child. I was talking about the song Voodoo Child. And in that, I had referenced Jimi Hendrix as coming out and showing the world that he is the biggest, baddest motherfucker to ever drop a boot on God green, or God's green earth with how heavy and badass he comes in. I mean, like, we're talking, he's the baddest motherfucker there is going on that song. And then Black Sabbath, X number of years later, releases Hole in the Sky. And now, guess what? They's the biggest, baddest motherfuckers on the planet. Okay? Like, I mean... It, it's got this great opening, because you just got seconds of... You can hear that there's noise going on. You can hear some little things and little tinks of instruments, and all of a sudden you're... Attack! In the background. Boom! 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 Oh my god, like, I mean, seriously, like, Bill Ward just straight coming down, four on the floor, cymbal bashing, geezer butlers in there, this beefy rhythmic bass, just, you know, because, I mean, basically, Geezer and Iomi play very similar things. It's just Iomi gets to go play off, right? And that's the thing. And Iomi's in there doing the thrash thing going on, man. And then he's just... And then the best part is, is this is when Ozzy wasn't a caricature of himself yet. 
So when he's doing what Ozzy does here, this is real Ozzy. This is pure, unadulterated Ozzy, man. I mean, when he's like, I'm looking through a hole in the sky. I mean, and this is Ozzy, man. Shit. Like, this, this is, you could not start an album off better than you could with this song, man. Like, I just, I'm sorry, there is just no way to start off a metal album better. And, on a side note, Pantera does a badass bitching cover of this song. Where it's just basically a modern update of it. Ooh. Ooh. Makes me shiver with anticipation. <laughs> Sorry, guys. All right. Um, let me get into Don't Start Too Late. Uh, cute little music film. Nothing special. Uh, then we got into Symptom of the Universe. Okay. So, when you hit Symptom of the Universe, you, at this point, have come to realize that you are in a thrash album. I mean, because Hole in the Sky is like big, beefy, Metallica, kill em all style thrash, okay? And then you get to Symptom of the Universe, and you're now, you're still in Metallica, big, beefy, kill em all. Like, okay, let's face it. Metallica, kill em all, obviously, you know, stealing from the masters, right? Okay. But this is what I'm trying to get at. This was thrash before there was thrash, man. And Symptom of the Universe, there's no denying it. Like, I've discussed the Sepultura cover of this, man. Metal and thrashy, crunchy. I mean, like, everything you... You, you know, like... the. This riff, this this song itself, man. This is this is the holy grail for thrash, man. This is the whole uh, the Ark of the Covenant, the original theatrical release of where Han shoots first. This is the Alpha and the Omega. It's the beginning and the end of thrash. It began. <laughs> with symptom of the universe, it ends with symptom of the universe. Okay, that that that's it. End of fucking story. And if and if at this point you you've already listened to these two songs and you're like, okay, I get that. The next song is a song that most people aren't gonna really know unless you have this album or you have the Aussie Years set, which I'll come back to at the very, uh, which I'll come back to when I do my Aussie rap party. Um, the next track, Megalomania, kicks in at 9 minutes and 40 seconds. And this one is just pure musical ecstasy. Holy shit. The layering, the texturing, the arrangements. This thing is fucking prog. It is goth. It is definitely heavy as fuck. Um... Even a little rock and roll, and I mean true blue, like classic rock and roll. Like we're talking, like for what them would be true blue, classic rock, rock and roll. Like where you're you're hearing some um, little Richie or little Richie, little Richard, sorry, um, or you're hearing um, Buddy Holly, even to a degree. Maybe not Buddy Holly so much. Um, I'm, uh, you know, like Elvis, the real rock, rock kind of stuff, like actual kind of classic -y rock kind of stuff, even a little Beatle rock, you know, the earlier Beatles kind of that type of rock kind of thing, a little of that in there, just, just in little parts, and it, it's just like this little section, little fill in these couple little parts, and it, it sits in there perfectly, like for all the different elements that are in this particular song, they all work perfectly, they all flow beautifully into each other. And this is one of those ones where you just, you can't help but realize what an amazing song it is. And when you get to about the 3 minute and 23 second marker, you just kind of want to grab that volume knob and just crank it up as hard as you possibly can crank that bitch up. And just let it make everybody's ears bleed. 
And you'll notice I've been a little loose with the F-bombs in this. And that's because when this song hits the 6 minute and 25 second marker. So, yeah. Um... <laughs> This song, Megalomania, really is an ex execution of Megalomania. It really is. Uh, out of all the huge, blown-up instrumental stuff that Black Sabbath has done, this has got to be one of the best. Like, I mean, just gratuitousness and everything, but it works. It fits. It's perfect. It's brilliant. Uh, Thrill of It All. Um, this one plays with various styles and elements as well. Um, uh, it's more of an album cut, though. It's an amazing album cut. Like, I've said this before, I'll say it again. There is no bad Black Sabbath song. It just agrees on how much you like it. Uh, <laughs> um, but this one, Thrill of It All, is an amazing, or is an album cut all the same, no matter how amazing of an album cut it is. Uh, Superstars. Uh, this is an interesting instrumental piece. Uh, has a bit of a militant vibe to it with the drumming. Really heavy on the synths and choir. Now, may, this is I mentioned this earlier about the synth thing. It may have been synths. It may not have been synths. I'm not 100% for sure. But to the average listener listening to it, it's going to definitely sound more synthy. Um, am I going insane in brackets radio? Um... Another one where there is honestly a ton going on, uh, but, and it all works, and it doesn't feel overblown, and it's a great album cut, and I do really dig it, but that's kind of how I've always felt about this song. It's a good album cut. And then you got uh, The Rit, which, um, Am I Going Insane? Radio flows seamlessly into The Rit. And Geezer has got this bass riff in there that's just absolutely amazing. I mean, it just lulls you in and mesmerizes you. And you're just kind of like sitting there going along with it. And then all of a sudden, the bear just boom, drops on you like a ton of bricks, man. And it is a great album closer clocking in at 8 minutes and 42 seconds. I mean, it's just another... I always overlooked this album because of alright so when it came to when I was a kid growing up I had an Aussie box set called Black Sabbath the Aussie Years and it went up until um, the song I believe it left out Technical Ecstasy and it left out uh, Never Say Die. And this particular CD was always kind of clustered in the mix with Volume 4. And these two ended up being two of the last Aussie year albums I picked up because I, the way they were kind of clustered in there, they weren't huge deals for me. I will say that I won't listen to this one so much over the years as time goes on. I will say that this one will definitely get played much more often over the years. The other thing that goes with this album I want to point out, though, is this is one of the digital remasters. But there's something wrong with this digital remaster. <laughs> And the reason why I say there's something wrong with this digital remaster is on every other digital remaster, it feels like they boosted the volume levels a little bit on everything, you know, cleaned them up, brought them up. This one, it feels like they cleaned everything up, but they didn't bring up the levels on anything at all. So if you're an old school CD collector like I am, this still has the volume level of what an AAD rated CD um, would have compared to a triple D rated CD. 
And for those of you that don't know, that would be analog recorded, analog mastered, digitally reproduced is a double A. Uh, triple D is digitally recorded, digitally mastered, digitally produced. So, yeah, like this should sound more like an ADD, but it, it sounds more like an AAD. So out of all the remasters, this is the one remaster I am actually disappointed with the sound quality on. But, still, just put it in, crank it up! All right, folks, I'm going to leave it there. I have one more Black Sabbath album to cover with Ozzy, and that would be the Reunion Live album, which will be coming soon. Other than that, let me know what you think of the Sabotage album. What is your favorite song off that album, etc., etc., etc. That's what the comment section is for. Uh, like button, subscribe button, little bell for notifications. Uh, there is a link that will take you to Patreon below. Uh, there is a Patreon, uh, or sorry, there's a local uh, site coming soon. So keep an ear out and an eye out for that. And peace, love, take care.